Support Name Explained on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. As someone who spent an awful lot of time looking at maps and talking about countries, I felt that I had a pretty good understanding of the nations of our planet. Sure, I might not be able to name all of them in a row, but I thought I at least had a good understanding of most nations. So when I heard about the nation of Benin, my jaw dropped. I can confidently say I had literally no clue that this nation existed. So huge apologies to anyone watching from this nation or anyone who has close ties to this land. That's my mistake. Maybe you are somewhat like myself and have never heard of Benin too. Well, after digging into this nation's history, it seems to be one of immense interest. So allow me to shine a spotlight on this nation for you. First of all, where even is Benin? Well, this nation could be found in the west of Africa, nestled between the nations of Togo and Nigeria. This nation is just over 44,000 square miles in size, so pretty small, but has a population close to 12 million. As mentioned, this is a nation with a really interesting history. However, in the darker corners of its history, this land seems to have been the epicenter of the transatlantic slave trade. It was from these lands where boats would leave Africa for the New World, and natives of the land were sold into slavery in the Americas. This nation is home to a stretch of road known as the Slave Route, which was the last piece of land many Africans walked across before being sent across the ocean. Today, this history is recognised with a memorial arch on this nation's coast where ships would have sailed out of, with this arch ominously being called the Door of No Return. This means that a lot of cultures and traditions from Benin have found themselves at home in parts of the New World, perhaps most noticeably voodoo, which is popular in places such as Haiti and Louisiana in the Americas. Voodoo, which is a corruption of its native name of Vondu, which is still called in Benin, seems to be immensely popular in the nation, with up to 17% of the population following it. Vondu even has official religious status in the nation. Vondu slash Voodoo is definitely something we should cover another time on this channel. It's way more than just the doles and curses that is so often portrayed as being. Like most nations of course, modern Benin faces many issues and challenges. However, one positive Benin likes to pride itself on is the fact that it's seen as having one of the most stable democracies in all of Africa. I was more than happy to learn all these interesting facts about this nation. However, what I was more excited about was discovering that this nation has not always been called Benin. That's right, Benin stands among the ranks of nations like Vietnam, Ethiopia, Myanmar, Sri Lanka and Iswatini as a nation that has changed its name. I genuinely thought I'd covered the majority of these name-changing nations, and then I found out that Benin had been sitting under my nose this entire time. I was shook. So, what name did this nation have in its former life then? Well, it was the name of Dahomey. This name of Dahomey isn't one from the nation's ancient past. In fact, the name change to Benin is only relatively recent, as we shall see. There will be many of you watching now who would have lived in the time when this nation was called Dahomey. Though despite being the country's official name up until fairly recently, we don't actually seem to know where this name comes from. Even its entry in the online etymology dictionary Dictionary tells us it's of unknown origins. I mean, come on now, Etim Online. I love you guys. I've made a career from copying you, but why even have an entry for a word if you're just going to say its etymology is unknown? That's like your one job. Other sources for word origins prove to be just as fruitless too. There's a fun folk etymology for this name, however. The story claims that the name derives from a conversation between Dohomi's second king, Dakodondu, and another chieftain called Dan slash Da. Supposedly, Dakodondu asked Dan for more land to expand his kingdom, and Dan responded by saying something along the lines of, should I open my belly and build you a house? In a sarcastic manner, Dakodondu, angered by this, responded by killing Dan and began building his palace on this spot. This folk etymology then explains to us that this name of Dahomey comes from words meaning something along the lines of kingdom inside the chief's belly. As mentioned, it's a fun story, but most likely isn't true. In the past, this Dahomey went by a variety of names, including the likes of Dasomi, Dahom, and simply Fon. 
this last name we have a clearer understanding of its origins, as this name derives from the Fon people. The Fon are an ethnic group from this area of Africa, and to this day are still the largest ethnic group in the nation of Benin. Why they are called this however we don't seem to know. However, it's this alternative name that we had the most insight on when it comes to the etymology of a Dahomey. This is a part of the plant that didn't keep track of its etymologies it seems, and that's completely okay. It's always fascinating coming across a name which can't be explained. They serve as a gentle reminder of just how little we know about our world at times, and they also remind us that unlike dinosaur bones or Greek pottery, names and words can't survive the ravages of time as easily. While this name might be a mystery to us, we know a lot more about Dahomey's past. If you didn't realise from the fact that they once had a king, Dahomey started life as a kingdom. Before the establishment of this kingdom, various smaller tribes settled in this land. Eventually though, the Fon people rose to be the most powerful and established this kingdom in around 1600 AD. The definitive origins of this kingdom however, like the name, aren't entirely known. There's a variety of founding myths for this kingdom, with the most popular being one of princes fighting over who should rule these lands, with eventually these three princes all going off to form their own kingdoms. Dahomey would remain an independent African nation until 1894. It was in this year that the kingdom was overtaken by the French. This of course didn't just happen overnight. The kingdom and this land had ties with Europe for some time, with there being evidence of Portuguese trade happening here before even the formation of this kingdom. French relations with Dahomey actually started back in 1878, as it was in this year that Benin's most economically prosperous city of Cotonou became a French protectorate. France wanted to rule this city as the trade and goods it produced was highly valuable to them. The king of Dahomey at this time Galili was friendly with the French. However, when he died in 1889, his son of Bihanzin took over and immediately became a lot more hostile towards the French. He retracted treaties with France and even raided them. This came to a breaking point in 1892 when war broke out between France and Dahomey. The French felt that the only way to regain control of the land was via a military takeover. This was achieved two years later in 1894 when the entire kingdom came under French rule, becoming known as French Dahomey. This land stayed under French rule all the way until 1958 when it became self-governing. Then two years later, on the 1st of August 1960, the nation became fully independent once again. Of course, with fresh independence came a name change. It had already gone from the kingdom of Dahomey to French Dahomey, and its new name was the Republic of Dahomey. This probably wasn't the name change you were expecting. Normally, it's when countries gain independence they change their names, and while going from kingdom to French to Republic is a big change unto itself, you'd have thought they would have changed the Dahomey part of the name too. However, the Republic of Dahomey would not gain the name of Benin until 1975. That's 15 years after their initial independence. It was on the 30th of November 1975 to be exact that Dahomey changed its name to Benin. It was this year that the Republic of Dahomey became the People's Republic of Benin. This was in the aftermath of a socialist coup on the nation in 1972. The name change was meant to symbolise the socialism now in the nation. Perhaps these socialists wished to move away from the name Dahomey as that was a name for a kingdom, something they no longer wanted to be linked to. This People's Republic became just the Republic of Benin in 1990, which it is to this day. But where did these socialists get the name of Benin from anyway? Well, funnily enough, Benin is a word that started its life as the name for a kingdom too, though not a kingdom within the borders of modern day Benin. The Kingdom of Benin? also known as the Edo Kingdom, lasted from 1180 to 1897 according to Wikipedia and was on land that is now part of the nation of Nigeria, Benin's eastern neighbour. As to how this Nigerian kingdom got its name? Well, it was of course named after its resident, the Bini people. The name of the Bini people themselves is thought to possibly derive from the Arabic Bani, meaning sons, as they were the children of this area, I suppose. SM Online actually had my back on this one. Cheers, guys. So, why did the people of Dahomey pick the name of a long gone Nigerian kingdom to use as their new name? Well, that kingdom also led to something else being called Benin, too, that being the Bite of Benin. 
Bites are not things we talk about all too often, and they appear in the names of places even less. A bite, however, is a geographical feature, being the name for bends or curvatures in a coastline. The Bite of Benin can be found within the Gulf of Guinea, in the southern shores of West Africa. This bite, like Benin itself, became heavily linked with the slave trade. It even appeared in shanties and rhymes, with lines like, Beware, beware, the bite of Benin, for few come out, though many go in. It says in, but I'm making it rhyme with Benin here because that just makes more sense. Anyway, this is thought to be a reference to malaria as many would catch the disease as they plundered the lands. Of course, the kingdom of Benin made its home on this bight, hence why it was named after them. This bight, however, stretches from modern day Nigeria where the kingdom of Benin was over into the nation that was formerly called Dahomey, now of course named after this bight. So the nation of Benin got its name from the Bight of Benin as the nation is on this bight. Then the Bight of Benin got its name from the Longon kingdom of Benin, which wasn't actually in Benin, but in Nigeria, and this kingdom of Benin was named after the Bini people. So just to be clear, that's people, kingdom, bite, nation. Maybe it would have been less confusing if they just stuck with that name of Dahomey. Though without this name change, I wouldn't have found out all about Benin, and maybe you wouldn't have either. Though some other YouTubers probably talked about it already. I, I don't check these things. Benin was suggested by Fenby Ford, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as name explains the patron saint of Benin. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that's name could be covered in a name explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just $1 a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram while I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.